In Surah 15, verse 9 of the Quran, Allah proclaims, We have without doubt sent down the message, and we will assuredly guard it. Muslims often interpret this verse as a divine promise that the text of the Quran would be perfectly preserved down to the smallest detail, and Muslims in general are convinced that this promise has been kept. They believe that the Quran has never undergone any change of any kind. This belief is shocking to anyone who's studied Islam's sources because the sources are filled with reports about changes to the Quran and disputes concerning the contents of the Quran. Interestingly, the Quran was only compiled as a book because much of it was lost. Shortly after Muhammad's death, the first caliph, Abu Bakr, needed to suppress a rebellion, and he sent many of Islam's most trusted Quran reciters into battle. Many of these reciters died, and Muslim sources, such as Ibn Abi Dawud's Kitab al-Masahif, tell us that portions of the Quran were forever lost because so many Quran reciters were killed. Abu Bakr decided that in order to prevent more of the Quran from being lost, the Muslim community needed a written copy. So he had a man named Zayd ibn Thabit collect what was left of the Quran. Entire chapters were missing from Zayd's Quran. In Sahih Muslim, Abu Musa tells the Quran reciters of Basra that the Muslim community had forgotten two chapters of the Quran through sheer laziness. One of the chapters was as long as Surah 9. In Abu Ubaid's Kitab Fada'al al-Quran, Aisha says that more than two-thirds of Surah 33 was lost. In Sunan ibn Majah, Aisha reports that certain verses of the Quran were lost because she had the only copy of these verses, and her copy was eaten by a sheep. By the time of Uthman's reign as third caliph, there were so many differences in the way Muslims were reciting the Quran, Uthman decided to take action. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Uthman orders the Muslim community to send him all their written manuscripts of the Quran, and he burned them all. Then he issued a new written version for Muslims to recite. Not all Muslims approved of the new Quran. Indeed, some of Muhammad's top Quran reciters rejected Uthman's edition of the Quran. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad told his followers to learn the recitation of the Quran from four people. Two of the four people on Muhammad's list were Abdullah ibn Masud and Ubay ibn Kab. Ibn Masud claimed that the Quran should only have 111 surahs. He claimed that Surah 1, Surah 113, and Surah 114 were just Muslim prayers and that they shouldn't have been included in the Quran. Ubay ibn Kab, another of Muhammad's top reciters, claimed that the Quran should contain 116 surahs. He said that Uthman's Quran was missing two prayers that should have been included, and these are different from the two chapters that Abu Musa said were forgotten. So Muhammad's best reciters couldn't even agree on what was supposed to be in the Quran, which means that the process of compiling the Quran was a difficult and sloppy process. Due to these disputes among Muhammad's hand-picked reciters, Muslims are faced with a dilemma. If Muslims say that the Quran we have today has been perfectly preserved, they must say that Muhammad was horrible at choosing scholars since he selected men who disagreed with today's texts. If, on the other hand, Muslims say that their prophet would know whom to pick regarding Islam's holiest book, they must conclude that the Quran we have today is flawed. Anyone who reads the Muslim sources can know that the Quran has changed significantly over the years. The evidence shows that entire chapters were lost, that large sections of chapters came up missing, that individual verses were forgotten, and that phrases have been left out. Muhammad's best teachers and reciters couldn't even agree on which chapters were supposed to be in the Quran. The early Muslims understood this when Ibn Umar, son of the second Muslim caliph, heard people declaring that they knew the entire Quran, he said to them, let none of you say, I have learned the whole of the Quran. For how does he know what the whole of it is when much of it has disappeared? Let him rather say, I have learned what remains thereof. This raises an obvious question. What's the difference between a book that's been perfectly preserved and one that hasn't been perfectly preserved? If Muslims are right, there's no difference at all. The typical characteristics of a book that hasn't been perfectly preserved are missing phrases, missing passages, missing chapters, disagreements about what goes back to the original, and so on. But the Quran has all of these characteristics. So Muslims who are aware of the evidence, but who also want to maintain the perfect preservation of the Quran, must say something like this. Yes, the Quran has all the characteristics of a book that hasn't been perfectly preserved, but it's been perfectly preserved anyway. Strange claim. We should also take note of the obvious. 
Muslim scholars are well aware of the fact that the Quran has been changed, and yet they tell less educated Muslims that the Quran has always been exactly the same. Why are Muslim scholars and leaders deceptive about the history of their book? Moreover, if they're willing to deceive their fellow Muslims about the history of the Quran, what else are they being deceptive about?